G'day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on this wonderful planet. And today I'm with the wonderful Sally Aislin once again. <laughs> hey, Harry. Yeah, I'm Sally. I'm the Holistically Fit Specialist. And how's your Tuesday going, Harry? Well, we had a few technology problems this morning. I'm call myself the learning difficulty expert. We managed to <laughs> put ourselves on pause this morning. But there we go. Uh, yeah. I don't even know how I did that. So today we're talking about fast food or junk food. Mm -hmm. Very addictive. Do you get addicted to junk food selling? Well, um, used to. We, um, back in the days of uni and whatever, big nights, my go-to food was always a dimmy and maybe a spring roll. And, you know, the highlight at uni was to go and get a big bag of hot greasy chips, put some vinegar and some gravy on them and watch days of our lives. That was our thing. We'd wag classes to sit up on the common room floor with these hot chips watching days of our lives. So yes, junk food has been around me, but you know, when I was growing up, it wasn't as prolific as it is now. You know, you drive down the road and it's everywhere and um, very different to, you know, 30, 40 years ago. I think we froze. And it was probably healthier. It was probably mum and dad running a fish and chip shop. Yeah. Yeah, we, it, wasn't, it might be every, wasn't. every couple of weeks it might be fish and chips wrapped up in the old newspaper. and um, yeah. Or birthdays was a treat to go to KFC, you know, once a year. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Harry? Oh, fish and chips were good. Love fish and chips. Yeah. And hamburgers. We had a good hamburger place down the road and I still like, I still like hamburgers. Occasionally go to grilled. Yeah. That's yeah. probably the only... Um, the only fast food that I that I had, apart from maybe packaged chips in the supermarket. Yep. Yeah. A beer on Friday night. And that's the thing; <laughs> it's a sometimes food. And you know, I think what we're going to chat about today is that when we understand how unhealthy junk food is, we all know it's unhealthy, but we don't un really understand the effects of it. But when you really do let that sink in. You think, well, that is a, a sometimes food. It's not an everyday food. And um, it's not just, you know, the the um, burgers and things. It's like, as you say, in the supermarket, a packet of chips. You know, it is junk food. So, um, yeah. And they're, and they're cheap because they're, they're using cheap ingredients. Mm, and, yeah, ooh, ooh, it's frightening. I think... Um, you know, how much did you say a Big Mac or a, what was it a Happy Meal was? $3. Yeah. And for that you get a, a cheeseburger or four, or four chicken nuggets. You get fries or an apple pie. Then you get a drink, which could be milk. It's probably, could be juice or more likely to be a soft drink. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's scary. Um, you know, and I think they have a small change menu. So I don't know. I think it was just like a dollar or two dollars or something, and you can get all these add-ons as well. So you know, it's difficult because um, it, it's all around us, and kids have been grown up with that as a treat. You know, let's go to Macca's or um, birthday parties or whatever. And in the high street just down by my gym, there's like there's grilled, there's schnitz, there's they don't have Maccas, but they have equivalents, Nando's, and ev everything packages up. So you just don't get one good. You don't just get a wrap or a burger, but then it's a meal with the fries and the drink. You know, it's a three-way deadly combo. <laughs> Were you rewarded with um, fast food as a kid, Sally? Um what, it really wasn't around that much. And as I said, birthdays was mm. like a, a KFC, but no, it was more the milk bar with some lollies or something. Mm. You get five raspberries for one cent back then. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a worry when parents reward their children with fast food because there's a lot of evidence that shows that when you associate that food with with a reward, that, that, that sets your taste buds up for life. You then associate those foods with with pleasure and reassurance and comfort. Right. Yep, yep, yep. So I was reading somewhere about the most addictive foods, um, seven of them, overall processed baked goods. So that's like your muffins and your biscuits and your donuts and 
yucky stuff. Soda drinks, especially those with caffeine. So, like, there's so many of them. And as we said, you, you mm. get them packaged up in your meals. Potato chips, like you were talking about as a, as a sometimes treat, you know, your salt and vinegar Smith's tri- chips or the cheese and onion or whatever else they have. And, you know, my thing... But it's interesting. If you have a look at the chips, the plain chips have very few ingredients in them. Mm. It's the flavoured ones that worry me the most because there are long strings of ingredients, most of which are incomprehensible. If you turn the packet over and look at the numbers on them, I mean, mm. they've come up with some obscure names for them, but you, from your sour cream and chive or something through to these smoky bacon whatevers, like what on earth is going in them to give them that flavour? So, yeah, if you're going to do it, go the the, the least amount of crap in them, I suppose. And then just the, the plain, just the plain chips. Plain chips. I'm going to put that down actually, and then and then it moves into the hot chips. So your French fries or your fish and chips chips, mm. you know, lots of salt on them, and you know, let's talk about the addiction that comes with this sort of stuff as well. Like that. Absolutely. So fast food is has all has all the neurological patterns of um, of a hard drug. Lights up the same parts of the brain as a hard drug. You get a dopamine rush when you eat it, when you ingest it, which is why you like it, because you feel good afterwards. Mm-hmm. That feel good feeling. Yep. You um, you get cravings for it. So I mean, when was the last time you got a craving for an apple or a, yeah, yeah, or yeah. a, a carrot? <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Um, as as you. As you really eat them, you, your tolerance to them, your thresholds build up, so you need more and more. Mm-hmm. And that accounts for why you binge, why, you know, some people eat a whole bar of chocolate. Um, and then if there's more, they'll keep going or eat a whole yeah. packet of stuff, you know, open the packet of, of exactly. and make the whole yeah. lot. Yeah. I can't so. imagine, but anyway. And, and, of course, when you abstain, if you've got the backbone to abstain, then you, you'll experience withdrawals. Yes. Because you're losing, um, you know, it's addictive. And then it's harmful for health as well. So you've got to have your come down off your, off, your, um, off your junk food as well. Come down, Correct. To, come down Wednesday, whatever. And keep yeah. It yeah, it, it's frightening. Um, yeah, and particularly I like that, well, I don't like it, but that's part of the addiction is that you're increasing that threshold. So what used to give you the hit beforehand doesn't give you that hit, so you need more and more. And hence you go back for more out of the packet or you you eat the whole lot of chips or you eat the everything that you've bought and you or you go back and get two of them. You know, it's not uncommon. I remember people used to get a couple of Big Macs, not just one, you know, to get that hit. Wow. Uh, and, and that's the moment when you ought to really notice and say, whoa, I've got some choices here. Do I want to go on down this addiction pathway or do I want to stop and reevaluate? Yeah. But you when have- you're going for that second packet of Tim Tams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I know with my clients, you know, it's almost like confession they came in and I ate a whole packet of... of um, corn chips last night or whatever because they open the pack and can't stop at one and that is the probably the most common thing amongst my clients is that if I start, I can't stop, you know, even if it's nuts, but something, you know, because it's got... Well, I guess one solution is to get the smallest possible pack. Well, my solution is don't buy it. Because if it's yeah, not in the right. pack, you can't get it because it all is right. hard to throw in that self-control. If, if you've got that addiction to that taste or that hit or whatever it is that you get out of it, you know, and it's very common and you can be healthy. I know I can't buy corn chips, like no way. Because if I open mm. that packet, see you later, alligator. And mm. you know what got me off it? This is years ago now. One day I happened to turn the packet over and realised there's 2,000 calories in this particular packet of stuff that I was eating. And OMG, that's more than my daily calor- calorific allowed. Mm. Wow. And wow. that was in one packet of corn chips and having it at the end of the day, like 10 o'clock when I finish, put my feet up. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> like, and, and, and Sally, those were 2,000 empty calories. Oh, totally, totally. And you've worked your butt off all day and think throwing it on and you're going to have all the implications late at night, blah, blah, blah. It's terrible. Coming back so to my... What does that mean for you, empty calories, Sally? Sorry? What does that mean for you when I say empty calories? Well, there's no nutritional benefit in it, but also yeah. it's just like... 
it's dead weight. It's like, because I work a lot with clients who are trying to keep their weight down, I always mm. say it's an equation of what goes in has to be less than what goes out. And when you're putting it in, you're trying to get as big a bang for your buck out of those calories that you're intaking with. So if it's 1,200 or 1,500, you want to get as much nutrient benefit out of that as you can. Mm. And here you are blowing the whole lot with something that's giving you no nutritional benefit at all. <laughs> it's like... And it, bears, and it bears no resemblance at all to the inputs. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like when we were talking the other day about hydration. You needed for a bloke, say, two and a half litres of fluids. But only 50% of that was coming from water on average. A lot of that was from, coming from soft drink, from tea and coffee, from power drinks. You know, they're not nutritional benefit. And then they have all the other you know, other negative things associated with it, with the caffeine or whatever else it is. So, you know, it, it's not just about how much you eat, it's what you eat, the quality of mm. what you eat. And mm. the same comes with this. You know, you're blowing your scale with a burger like it's already off the scale. I That's what with one of my kids. They said, oh, I haven't eaten all day, can I just have that? And I said, yes, but let's look at, it's like giving them pocket money. What are you going to spend it on, you know? Mm blow it 100 bucks on crap or you could be really savvy and buy some really good quality things and have heaps of it it's the same with your food you know you want quality food inside of you and then you've only got a limited number of calories to play with you're really going to blow it on a thick shake thick shakes are shocking they're disgusting <laughs> they're really bad they are and, the more, and of course the more you have them the more you want them yeah yeah, yeah. and another one of the seven most addictive foods i came across was ice cream and yeah. McDonald's, they have the ice cream sundaes. But, you know, I, I know so many people from young kids through to, you know, uh, older age people that love their sort of uh, mini magnums or, you know, chock tops at the pictures and things like that. So ice cream's up there along with white bread, of course. And chewing gum was an interesting one. But um, another addictive food and, you know, the research shows that having more and more gum is restricting your your healthier choices like choosing an apple or something like that or some healthier food choices so you know and you're also getting artificial sugar with gums oh yes we've got all that as well yep stimulating juice. flavors colors so on yep. yeah yep so yeah interesting but you know hot chips i'd have to put up there with the greasy food you know it's the best hangover food it used to be spring rolls dimmies chips i don't know not so much Maccas for me, but just that sort of grease fit hit from all those yucky trans fatty acids that we just don't want to know about. And then linked to that, Harry, is obesity and overweight and heart issues that you get. That's right. Diabetes. Um, one, that's right, and diabetes. Yes, these are avoidable health conditions which impose incredible burdens on society. I think cardiovascular disease uh, kills 44,000 Australians a year. It affects one in six. Number um, one is killer here, biggest killer here in Australia. Diabetes affects two million a year, of which, uh, sorry, 1.7 million, of which 500,000 are silent. In other words, the clients don't know they've got it. Wow, that's almost a third. Third yes. people don't realise they've got diabetes. Are you kidding me? Correct. Well, yeah. so they're just drinking a lot and, um, you know, getting headaches um, and whatever, I don't know. Um, and that's the fastest growing condition. And it's Diabetes. completely avoidable. Yeah, it's completely avoidable. And that's avoidable. the thing that's completely avoidable. And that's what we're passionate about is, you know, making people aware and becoming more accountable of the choices that they're making every day. Not so much for now, but down the track. So you might be healthy now and think I'm okay, but you're not going to get away with it. It will catch up with you. That's absolutely given. And, I mean, like a lot of our listeners like you and I, we invest in our children's education. We invest in, you know, the ethical framework for them. Mm. We bring them up to be decent human beings. But mm. what about the investment of good food? If we look at the Australian Nutritional Guidelines, they're recommending, and these, these are not perfect by any means, they're, they're pretty conservative. They're recommending five vegetables, five servings of vegetables a day, yep. two servings of fruit, whole grains instead of processed grains, right. yep. lean meat, less red meat for male adult males water instead of soft drinks we've covered that yeah reducing high fat foods particularly the processed high fat foods yeah 
and, and limit takeaway foods. And yeah. we all know it's sugar that makes you fat, not fat, not good fat. No, fat's good for you. Yeah, the good fat's good for you. And it's sugar. Sugar, therefore, is a very empty calorie. One of the most iniquitous things about fast food and junk food is that if you're getting prepared meals, you've got no idea what's in it. Yep, yep. If you go to a supermarket and buy fast food, which is packaged, at least you can see what's in it. Yep. Once you know what's in it, you can then look up a wonderful little book like this and you can get it as an app. It's called The Chemical Maze. It's one of the best Australian little books. And it'll allow you to decode what all those words and numbers mean. Oh, that's awesome. So you can avoid it. You can get this on your smartphone. The other couple of books I got today, uh, some of them are a little bit controversial. One is Sweet Poison. Oh, yeah. Why Sugar Makes You Fat. Poison, yep. Think of it, just think of the Krispy Kreme donuts. Oh, gross. <laughs> and if you want to understand about fast food, and this really is more about American fast food than Australian fast food, because we do have higher standards here, there was a really shocking book written mm. in 2005 called Fast Food Nation. And it describes the, um, the abuse not only to the cattle, to the farmers, to the workers in the process yards, Mm. For the um, the people that work in fast food, it's that it's that whole process of abuse, and then to the end user. Mm. Yeah. It's not a nice, it's not a nice industrial structure. It's, it doesn't nurture us. It doesn't care for us. It doesn't mm. fill anybody with love. Mm. Mm. And you know, you've just brought up a really good point: is where are they sourcing the food from for these fast food places? Um, one of my clients told me a scary story. There must be some truth in it, but the potatoes that are used for McDonald's fries, they had a purple streak through them or something, and so it wasn't visibly appealing. So the potatoes were sprayed with some sort of stuff, but it was so toxic that when they actually, you know, got what it's called, farmed them all, they had to leave them in leave them in these sheds till all the toxicity left because it was so strong and overpowering and that's to stop this vein of blue or something in a particular line of potatoes i mean that's the source of the the potato before then you've added on all the processing i mean have you ever seen how uh, crab meat is made you know the seafood extender i don't think there'd be much crab meat in it would there yeah. It's actually zero. It was one time I had a client and her daughter came with me and she was on the treadmill. So I put the TV on for her over the treadmill when she's going. And we all stopped and watched this show and it was processing and showing the manufacture of crab meat, literally zero crab meat in there. The colouring, the pink colouring was added in. It's a bit like chicken nuggets where there's just shit put together and you would never eat that stuff and once again that's another sweet thing that people crave and love it's it's used mm -hmm. widely it, it's well again you know if the food you're eating bears no resemblance to the inputs you you need to think about <laughs> if it doesn't look like food don't eat it and you know yeah. and we have discussed it you know the breakdown um of food you can put a mcdonald's burger on your desk and it can stay there for months and look exactly the same so if it's doing mm -hmm. that to the food what's it doing it to our bodies <laughs> exactly. And, um, yeah. Well, yeah. be well preserved, I expect. Absolutely, dig me up in a hundred years. <laughs> you know, I'll be looking the same. It's terrible. But you know, there's lots of, um, particularly for kids, there's lots of bad side effects with memory and learning problems. Um, you know, after five days, I think there was a study done that where kids, mm. or just generally people who had been on junk food, had um, their attention, their speed, their mood memory all deteriorated within five days and mm, mm. you know imagine long term if you're having it often I had a client having mcdonald's three or four times a day shocking what's it doing to you know your attention your ability to function normally you know so um it's interesting you're talking about how uh junk food lessens your ability to control your appetite so um, it gets, sends mixed message, messages to the brain, which makes it difficult to process when you've eaten and when you are hungry. It, it, I think it's linked to the trans fatty, trans fatty acids, causes inflammation. And so the part of the brain that can deal with that satiation point and whatever, it all gets jumbled. So 
there's it's also muddled up with addictions. Yeah. And addictive right. behaviour. So you're eating when your addiction kicks in rather than when you're feeling hunger pangs. Yeah. So it all becomes very complicated. And and if it's a comfort if it's a comfort process then you've got that too. So if you've got not feeling happy or you're feeling stressed then you know, you go to the cupboard for that. Mm. That comfort and- hit. And that's just a double-edged sword because it's linked to depression and all those other mental issues. So you're feeling depressed and you run to your go-to, it's going to get you more depressed and make mm. you feel. I mean, there's nothing worse than doing a pig out on junk food and then feeling completely sick afterwards. What? You know, that, mm. it's like eating, even if it's a packet of chips and then just feel that, ugh, that feeling, yucky feeling. Absolutely. Or if, you, yeah. if you're at a function where there's nothing else to eat and you've got to eat the food, you, you feel it. It's like, oh, gross. Well, you just, Fried finger yeah. food. <laughs> yeah. Just have to exercise some restraint, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Or I always say to people, eat before you go. And mm. easy poison. Yes, exactly. Eat the least yeah. fried options because some functions I've been to, there's no other option. You go, oh, gross, gross. <laughs> but, you know, dementia and all that sort of stuff is linked in with... Um, all this fatty foods too. Oops. Well, yeah, I mean, probably with oxidative stress, you know, mm. and sugar is, is pro-inflammatory, as are processed carbs. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I just think it's a really good topic to build some awareness about because sugar's had so much highlight and salt, but, you know, junk food, we're sort of told, yeah, it's bad for you, but it, it's still ongoing and there it's not enough sort of exposure about how bad it is for you and the repercussions of long-term junk food usage and uh yeah so have you got any tips there harry yeah well my tips are realize that junk food will addict and and make make a an informed choice about whether you want your children to become addicts for life um you know we see suits sitting in fast food places because they're addicted Resist the cravings when you experience them because you will. Mm. These foods are addictive, so you will crave them. You need to exercise self-control to avoid that. And and then replace the junk food with whole food. Yeah. Food, food that looks like what comes from the farm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, cool. And mine were very similar, you know, it make it a sometimes food as to, yes, okay, balance is everything but if you want a packet of chips don't have it every day you know just have it as a sometimes food look at alternatives so or healthier alternatives i think i was telling you before that you know rather than giving getting my kids chips i make fish and chips at home and what i do is i chop up sweet potato spray it with coconut oil cover it in turmeric and put it in the oven they love it and um Mm. and and do it with some flathead tails and that's home version of fish and chips so much better than they're still having it but it's just not quite the same and the other day i saw this awesome recipe for nachos but instead of using the corn chips it was um with baked cauliflower it looked divine right wow absolutely scrummy oh baked cauliflower have you tried that um no i haven't oh yeah. I do. bake that spray it with a little bit of um coconut oil put it in the oven bake it and you could put some pine nuts with it it's delicious delicious wow, nice. kale chips you know same thing just <laughs> a little bit of celtic sea salt over the kale in the oven There's yeah. a spray it's yummy it's crunchy and it's delicious and you've got that natural salt on it and then um i often recommend people to do if they're wanting sort of a craving a bit of junk food have a drink of water for starters and then if they can distract themselves for 10 to 20 minutes the craving should go and um mm. Mm. You know, it's just about training yourself or, or keeping yourself busy so that you can, um, you know, hopefully it will subside. But, Harry, I think this is an awesome topic and one that really needs some airplay and one that um, more parents, if they're aware of some of the dangers or the implications of, you know, bringing it into the family, because that's the thing. I think adults are a lot more aware than kids are and if we can, you know, help inform our kids about it, and keep it at least limit it to a sometimes food, and as you like to say, not as a treat, but just as a sometimes food, yeah. and you know, um, find healthier versions for treats. Yeah, we don't want happy meals for life. 
No, <laughs> because you'll be unhappy down the track. And honestly, that's right. Yep. <laughs> it might be good. We'll be. <laughs> Very and you look old. Be- you look old before your time. Exactly. Yeah. Who wants that? Gross. Yeah. And the smell of junk food is nothing more appalling, is it? Oh, you get in a cab. Oh yeah. Oh, someone's had a Macca's or something. Oh, it's so revolting. And then what goes in has to come out, and when it comes out the other end, whew, you can always pick a a, a Macca's fart. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Sally. <laughs> Harry, <laughs> too much information, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but it's okay. True. It's, it's true. It's stuff is digested. Anyway, that was been lovely chatting to you about this today. <laughs> and I'll catch you next week. Okay. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed Bye. that, and uh, we'll catch you later. Bye. I just find that.